Well, I guess let me say just first off is uh, I grew up in Northwest. I love Northwest, and my heart is to help with work with the community to make Northwest as good as it can be and better than it is. And so the things that he's uh, putting in this, this complaint, which from my understanding, nothing's really been done with it by Virginia State Police. No, I have not heard from the state police at all. Okay. What do you want to say to what he's um, complaining about as far as, I guess he's concerned that some members of council are using their power to influence uh, purchase of certain properties and neighborhoods, particularly Northwest? Well, that appears to be what he's concerned about, and uh, I certainly don't have any motives in that at, at all. You know, we do development, and I was encouraged to seek opportunities in Northwest to be able to make a difference in the community. And the, ha the building that I bought at the corner of Mormon and 11th Street uh, is in what was a former community village when I was growing up. That was a very active area. Had a Garland's drugstore there, had a Kroger's there. Everything you'd expect in a community village. And you know, it has none of that now. So I felt like at that building, and I was encouraged specifically to buy that building to help sort of start a catalyst in that neighborhood for good. And so we're looking for opportunity to see how that building can serve Northwest. We're looking, uh, talking to a lot of not-for-profits. We're hoping that that first floor of that building will be an incubator for small Northwest not-for-profits that need a home. And sort of be the co-lab that's over in Grandin Court, be the co-lab of Northwest. And that can be the start of the rebuilding of that uh, corridor. Okay. Um, and then there was also the emails that he's, I guess, passing out to different people. Um, I guess having conversations about different things, particularly the Hope Center. Uh, what do you want to say, I guess, about the Well, the Hope Center, I got to know the Hope Center when I was running for city council. And Hope Center was in trouble with code enforcement when I started getting involved. And I helped the Hope Center in a number of ways. And they were involved with problems with code enforcement because they were in a building that uh, they didn't have an occupancy permit that allowed them to do what they were doing in the building. So I volunteered, since I used to be the president of an architectural engineering firm, I volunteered to draw plans for them to get themselves straight with the building department. And I did that, and then there was delay after delay in implementation of what had to be done there, and they were continuing to doing things in the building that were not allowed by the occupancy permit. So I talked to code enforcement about, I originally got code enforcement to back off because I was helping them, and then but when I saw that they were not doing anything that they needed to do in order to come into compliance, then I, turned, I talked to code enforcement myself to ask them to see whether they had the proper licenses that they needed. Because I felt like at a not-for-profit, if they were legitimate, they needed to be legitimate in having the licenses that they were required to have to do whatever they were doing in the, in the building. So I guess this is what the conversations are taking place. Right. It's so they were concern for the kids they were the upset kids. that I was involved uh, in discussions about code enforcement to get them to have the licenses and the permits that they needed to do what they were doing in the building. And I guess that was construed as a threat uh, because mm -hmm. I'd bought a building across the street. Do um, you have anything, Greg? Um, Is, I just have one question. Look at Arisha. She's more attractive, and I have no hair. Is there just something you want to put out there just to sort of calm any kind of questions down about any of this? Is there any message you'd like to convey at this point? Well, the message that I want to convey, and I've been conveying on Facebook, is I'm willing to talk about any of this. And I've, if I've done anything that's been miscommunicated or anything that's, that uh, people feel like that I've done in a wrong way, I'd be glad to talk about it and correct it. So I'm inviting people to come down and talk, just as I have my coffee and chats twice a month. This last one we had on gentrification because I've been construed of you know being a person that's going to gentrify the neighborhoods by what I do development-wise, which I do not want to do. I want it to be for the people who are in the neighborhood now. And next Wednesday we're having another coffee and chat at nine o'clock in the morning, and we're calling it gentrification two. We're going to continue to talk about that. I went to the Gainesboro neighborhood meeting last uh, night, invited people to come talk to me about any subject they want to talk about, including anything in this accusation, uh, so that we can get it right. So that instead of you know being at odds with each other, that we can work as a community to do things good for the neighborhood.
Have you had a conversation with Mr. Jeffrey um, recently about all of this? Talked to him briefly after the council meeting when he came, and it was not productive uh, conversation. Uh, I saw him and shook his hand last night at the Gainesburg community meeting, but I would welcome any opportunity to talk about his concerns about what I'm doing and see how we can work together to make uh, an office. Uh, I grew up in Northwest. I love Northwest and my heart is to help with, work with the community to make Northwest as good as it can be and better than it is. And so the things that he's uh, putting in this, this complaint, which from my understanding, nothing's really been done with it by Virginia State Police. No, I have not heard from the state police at all. Okay. What do you want to say to what he's um, complaining about as far as, I guess he's concerned that some members of council are using their power to influence uh, purchase of certain properties in neighborhoods, particularly Northwest. Well, that appears to be what he's concerned about, and uh, I certainly don't have any motives in that at, at all. You know, we do development, and I was encouraged to seek opportunities in Northwest to be able to make a difference in the community. And the, ha the building that I bought at the corner of Mormon and 11th Street uh, is in what was a former community village when I was growing up. That was a very active area. Had a Garland's drugstore there, had a Kroger's there. Everything you'd expect in a community village. And you know, it has none of that now. So I felt like at that building, and I was encouraged specifically to buy that building to help sort of start a catalyst in that neighborhood for good. And so we're looking for opportunity to see how that building can serve Northwest. We're looking, uh, talking to a lot of not-for-profits. We're hoping that that first floor of that building will be an incubator for small Northwest not-for-profits that need a home. And so.